Hello everyone, this is uh, Vahe with another video to prepare you for experiment number 10. So in this experiment we'll be looking at the diode uh, used in a, what's called a rectifier circuit. And these circuits we can take sine waves for example, time varying wa waveforms and convert them to constant waveforms. So that process is called rectification, so going from AC to DC. Essentially, your desktop power supplies that do the uh, constant voltage outputs that we'll be using, the 5-volt supplies, those are basically rectifiers because they plug into the wall, which is AC, and they give you DC, relatively constant output voltages. So, in this experiment, we'll be looking at some very simple circuits. And um, besides the experimental setup, as before, I'm going to give you the simulation files. I'm going to give all those to you. So um, you can use those to determine uh, kind of what your expectations should be as you build the circuits. So let's get started. Uh, let's get to the simulation files, which basically will describe you know, exactly what's going on. Our circuits are very, very simple. So we have basically three components. And these components we've seen before, obviously. The diode. Um, we've seen before in the previous experiment. It's the same one. We only have one on our kit. Uh, we have a resistor, uh, 22 kilo ohms. We used that particular resistor before, actually, as well. Um, and it's a function generator. And, you know, we've set up the function generator before in experiment number five, actually. We set up the function generator and we used it. So um, this is the simulation diagram for a very simple rectifier. Um, there are a lot of things in this diagram. It looks very, very busy, but Actually, there's only three components. The sine wave, which is the is going to be generated by the function generator, right? The way it looks like right now, okay, this is a 10-volt sine wave, so 10-volt minus 10 volts, right? That's how it goes, and 60 hertz, so it's 60 cycles per second, right? So uh, that means that each period is 1 60th of a second. And then we have the diode and the resistor. So this is it, and... There are some things here, like this this thing in the box is the model for this diode. Don't have to really worry about it. It's given. And this command here does the transient analysis, runs the simulation for 100 milliseconds. So basically, that's six periods. So when you run the simulation, you'll see six cycles of the input, and you'll see the corresponding output. And it's quite simple. We have an input here, and we have the output there, and that's it, okay? Um, so what I'm going to give you is I'm also going to give you the what's called a plot file. So when you actually run the simulation, the waveforms of interest, waveforms of interest automatically come up. Okay, but if they didn't come up, you could probe them, as shown before um, in other LT spice simulations. But uh, so please um, uh, copy all the files on the directory, the folder that you have on the desktop, in the lab, and you'll be okay. So just basically hit the running man and you should see this output. So the input is this green looking waveform and the output is this blue looking waveform. Um, so you can see why it's called a halfway rectifier because the output here across the resistor is simply the portion of the input sine wave that's positive, right? Portion of the sine wave that's positive. In fact, if I um, overlay them. Let me do that. You can do that by left clicking the uh, the label of the voltage, dragging to the top, and you can see again temporarily. Let me remove this bottom pane so you can see kind of what's going on. You can see that the output blue is pretty much following the input green on the positive sides. When the input voltage goes negative, the diode is off. Okay, the diode is off. And the output is zero. Okay, and you can see that there's a little bit of difference between the input and the output on the positive cycle, and that's because the diode has a voltage drop, right? When the diode conducts, it's got a voltage drop. How much? Well, if we zoom in again, uh, click the left mouse button down and kind of drag like this, okay? And how much is the difference? Well, uh, this peak of the input is 10. And this uh, green, uh, sorry, the blue waveform looks to be about 9.5 volts. So there's a difference of about 0.5 volts. That's the forward voltage or the on voltage, right? As I said in the uh, lecture before, that could be anywhere between 0.4 and 0.9, you know, or 0.5 and 
It, it really varies. But it does make sense why there's a little bit of a discrepancy. That's perfectly fine. Okay. So anyway, um, it, it should be um, okay, right? I think it should be okay. If you just run this simulation, you, sh you automatically get this. And it'll even be in a, a form where they're in two panes. So let me close it to show you. So if you're like this, right? We just input this file, run the simulation. You automatically get the output like this. And, um, and you know, there's nothing really for you to do except just look at it and, and copy it down, right? Um, right? So this is it. This is the uh, first part. So this is the first circuit, one of the three circuits. And it's quite easy. And in the experimental setup, um, you'll go ahead and set this up actually using the function generator on the breadboard, right? You diode and it's only three, two components here. And then you'll make measurements of the input and the output and compare it to the simulation and see how they match, how close they are. And note any discrepancies, things like that. Okay? So this is circuit number one. Circuit number two, it's very simple, right? In fact, each additional circuit is 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 actually just a additional one more component, right? So we go to circuit number two, that's right here. Okay, let's let's move it up here. So let's close this one. Let's close these. And let's move up uh, to circuit two. Okay, circuit two is this. And what's the difference here? All we've done is we've now put a capacitor across the 22 gate resistor. So we're going to use a component that we've used before. As I said, we've used all our components here. You've seen this before. It's the 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. It's the can looking capacitor, right? And be sure to note the positive, right? The positive will go to where the out is and the negative side, which has the minus signs, right, on the can package, that goes out to the uh, ground side, right? Other than that is the identical simulation. We're just simulating for six periods and we're looking at the output to see what happens, right? So if you click on the running man, you automatically get this waveform. And as you can see, right, the output voltage is now not going up and down, right? Um, in fact, there's a pretty constant output. And that's the point about the AC to DC converter. You input an AC waveform and what your output is sort of like a constant waveform. It's not exactly a constant, right? It's got some variation, but it's almost a constant. And you, you see that uh, this, this curve where it kind of goes up is that's when you turn on, turn on the simulation, right? Uh, when you view this on an oscilloscope, uh, the system would have been turned on a long time. So you're not going to see this part of it in the scope. You're just going to see the, the mid portions of the scope. You might see the portion, let's say, that's way down. You might see something like uh, this maybe, right? And as you can see, there's a variation, right? But... The waveform is much, much more constant than it did before. You know, how flat is it? Uh, how much is the variation? Well, you can look at that on the scope and kind of figure it out. You can measure those things. But let's take a look at this very little more closely. Okay, so if you auto range in this, you can see that the variation is about, you know, you're going from uh, 9.31 to 9.38. So like 0 0.07 volts, 0 0.07 volts or 70 millivolts, right? So it's pretty small, right? It's pretty small. So you can see what the capacitor does. Capacitor placed across the output terminals here, it kind of holds up that voltage. Instead of it being varying up and down, up and down like before, now the voltage is kind of held, right? Because we store charge in the capacitor and the capacitor, uh, you know, basically resists the change of the voltage. It tries to keep it as close to a constant as possible. So as you can see, this is a very, very kind of a crude AC to DC converter. Um, there are better ways of doing it, obviously, but you can see the point. Now, um, having said that, we have a third circuit. What's a third circuit? In the third circuit, we increase the capacitance even further. Now we're going to use our uh, 220 microfarad capacitor, and that's also in your kit. We've used it before, right? So in the third experiment, or a third circuit, I should say, right, in the... Um, let's close these and let's take a look at the third circuit. It's right here. Okay, here it is. And as you can see, the only difference is a 220. Every setup is the same. When you're building some of the breadboard, your measurements for the scope and your inputs, they're going to be identical. All you're, going to, all you're going to be doing is building the first circuit, right? Make the measurements, build the second circuit by adding the capacitor, make the measurements in the third circuit. 
change the capacitor to from 100 microfarad to 200 microfarad, make the measurement. So once you build the circuit, the three circuits are gonna go really, really fast. Because all you're doing is just swapping out a component here and there, and that's about it, okay? So I expect this to go fast, and uh, let's see what happens in this case. Let's run the simulation, okay? Run the simulation, and you can see the waveform here. Again, you can see a relatively constant voltage, okay? Relatively constant voltage. And again, you want to see what's going on a little more closely here. You zoom in, okay, you zoom in. And again, the way I'm zooming in is, if you take the, this, this cross, the cursor, right, I hold the left mouse uh, button down, right, the left button goes down and I just drag into the region that I want to look at, and then when I'm done, I just let go, and here it is. And when you're here, you want to zoom in further, or you just want to see this in a sort of an auto scale, you can just go up here to this button right here, okay, auto range, click it, and you can see kind of the variation here. And you know what's the variation? You can see kind of going up, it still hasn't settled yet in the simulation, but if you were to go peak to peak, right, you know, how much is that? You know, this is like 9335, this is like 9360 or something, you know, whatever they are. You can definitely see that the peak to peak variation, we call that ripple by the way, peak to peak variation is also called peak to peak ripple. The variation went down. So higher the capacitance, right, the higher the capacitance, the smaller the variation, right? So it becomes more and more and more like a DC output, a constant output, okay? So if we zoom out, you can see that this is becoming more and more of a constant. You know what value is that? It's about, you know, 9.2 volts or something, right? Because we lose some uh, voltage due to the diode on and so on and so forth, right? Um, anyway, um, I hope uh, you find this video useful. It's not a very long video, but again, we're using things that we've used before. We're using the diode that we used before. We're using the capacitors that we used before. We're using the function generator that we set up before. And we're using the simulations that we kind of are familiar with. Before. But they're different circuits. But I will give you the, the schematic files. Those are the ones that ended ASC. Okay, those are the schematic files. Like this one is a schematic file. And then you also get files that have the same name but end with PLT. Those are the plot files. It's not the data but it's what to plot, right? So if you have those files together in one directory, as you've seen before, it's just a reminder, okay? I'm just reminding you. If you have that, if you click the running man, these waveforms will automatically pop up. Nothing to put in, nothing to probe, nothing to click. It just automatically comes up and you can just work on it directly. The only other thing you may do, of course, once the waveforms are up, as I did here, you may want to sort of zoom into a region like this, right? Go in here, um, and let go and then maybe auto range to take a closer look to see what's going on sorry i just undid it okay so you can go over here and you can maybe go auto range like this okay and then maybe take a closer look at what's going on in here right and you can you can estimate you don't have to be perfect right you know what this level is it's 9324 and this level is 9359 you can see roughly what that difference is so that that variation okay that peak to peak variation we call ripple r i p p l e ripple okay it's the terminology um and um this is basically it um i'm going to make the video available uh as soon as possible i'll send a message when it's up obviously you'll know it if you're watching this you'll already know it i guess and then as usual um uh, i'll be providing you the the uh, circuit files and the plot files there will be three circuit files and three corresponding plot files. And then, as usual, of course, the experimental uh, procedure right up with the cover sheet uh, will also be posted uh, when I'm, I guess, done with that. So uh, I hope you find this useful, and uh, I hope you have fun with the experiment. Again, it's a, it's a, this is a very, very practical application, actually, because AC to DC conversion is a very, very fundamental process. And anytime you have a circ, anytime you have a system with a, a power supply in it, right? Even those uh, chargers, for example, that you have that you plug into the wall, right? And then you're eventually charging your phone, right? Well, what you're, what's charging your phone is DC or relatively constant voltage. What you're plugging into the wall, that's AC. So what's in the middle? It's some kind of a rectification circuit, right? Rectification. The process of going from AC to DC, it's called rectification. Okay, 
rectification. And circuits that do that rectification are called rectifiers. Right. So there, if you can imagine how many times you're doing that, how many devices you have, you realize that some kind of a rectifier circuit um, is in pretty much every device almost you own. So you're interacting with it indirectly probably every day. Okay. So that's the idea behind this. And this is a simple example of showing how that kind of works. All right. So thanks very much for your attention. Um, I will see you uh, next week in lecture if you're my, if you're my section. Um, otherwise, have a good week and um, hope to do one more of these videos for Experiment 11. So um, over and out for now until next time. Thank you.